Greetings, Royals. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Rati Shalom. We are live, we are live and ready for the word. How is everyone doing? I hope we are all doing great. I hope we are all winning. Hope we have, we had a beautiful week, Royals. We took charge. We conquered, like I always ask every time, Royals. So we are ready for the word. It's a beautiful month of June, you know, and of course, there's so much to be grateful to God for. And apart from that, there's so much reasons for us to pray, right? So we had a beautiful time last week for the word as we shared on the topic, seek his first. So now before we even go there, Royals, I would like us to take some time and show gratitude to our heavenly father. He deserves our worship. He deserves our gratitude. He deserves to be thanked to do us for all that he is doing in our lives. Wherever you are right now, as you are watching, I would like, to I would like you to take this opportunity to just say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I am grateful. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for my business, for my job. I'm grateful for all that which you're doing in my life. I am grateful for spiritual growth. I'm grateful for blessings. There's a there's so much to be grateful to God for, Royal. So before we start, you know, we always start with gratitude. So that is what we are going to do right now. Once again, I am greeting you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Rati Shalom. Once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all around the world. Now, right now, let us just go ahead and thank God. Let us go ahead and appreciate Him. Let us go ahead and show some gratitude. Wherever you are, speak speaking tongues if you're speaking tongues if it's in your own understanding go ahead and do so but it is actually better when you also speak in tongues so if you don't speak in tongues and you desire to speak in tongues or you are like you know what i want to be filled with the holy spirit i tell you there's no distance in the realm of the spirit we can help you wherever you are fill you with the holy spirit and you can begin to speak in tongues. say how send us an inbox talk to us and we will find a way to call you to communicate with you and pray with you over the phone for you to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. So let's just thank God right now. Go ahead and pray. We are grateful to you, O God. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for all that which you're doing in our lives. We are grateful for your praises. We are grateful for your work in our lives in the name of Jesus. We are grateful for your praises, for your grace, for your love, for your honor. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for our families, for divine health, for blessings, for spiritual growth in the name of Jesus. We are grateful for elevation. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for giving us such platforms to share your word. We are grateful to you, O oh God. We thank you for all that which you are doing in our lives. Thank you for supplying all our needs. Thank you for meeting us at our point of need. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your praises that work in us. We are grateful to you, O oh God, even for this platform. Yes the fountain insights change the platform that you have given us to share your word yes and many lives to be blessed in the name of jesus we are grateful we don't take it lightly we are grateful to you oh god in this moment as we share your word our hearts are open our minds and our spirits to receive your word with gladness in the name of jesus lord we thank you oh god even for all those that will be participating there will be ministers too specially oh god in the mighty name of jesus those that will take their time to 
to listen to the messages again. Lord, don't be inspired, don't be turned, and the, yes, don't be transformed through your word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We are grateful. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Glory to God. You know, I love it when we show some gratitude to our Heavenly Father like this. He likes it. He loves it. He enjoys when we come back to and say, Lord, we thank you. We are grateful. There's so much power on gratitude. More than even, you know, just begging like, God, please help me with this. When you show gratitude, God opens more doors. So you need to learn to be grateful to God. And during an inspiration for you, Recap Royals, we also share that gratitude gives you peace. There's that inner peace. When you show gratitude to your heavenly father, glory to God. So without wasting time, let us get into the message. Today, Royals, it's a beautiful Sunday and we are excited and ready in this month of prayer. We say this month of June is our month of prayer. And we say that if you didn't listen um, uh, on the message that we shared last Sunday, it's available. You know, you can watch it. It's either on our Facebook page at, at Fountain Insights Church or you can go to our YouTube channel at Fountain Insights TV and listen to that message. Glory to God. We say that, you know, uh, the topic for last week was seek his first. And we spoke about the presence of the Holy Spirit at work in us in prayer, through prayer. And then we say that we ought to pray. We seek God in the place of prayer. And we said, God, this month, God wants us to pray like never before. He wants us. He wants our attention because there's something that he wants to communicate with us for new levels, for what he wants to do in our lives. So you can only get that in your place of prayer. And the topic for today is place of prayer. So we're going to be looking at some of the few points on prayer and, you know, what prayer does. In, in, in your spirit and apart from that i will also share you know one of the the chapter that in the book of mark that the holy spirit deposited into my spirit that i want us to look at as a result of prayer so you will see that you know what god talks to us especially even in our place of prayer so you cannot stay and say you know what i don't have time to pray i don't want to pray or i don't feel like praying like we said during an inspiration for you as well because uh, we have an inspiration for you every friday that uh, we do the recap and we emphasize on prayer we emphasize on prayer so now let's look at the topic for today place of prayer there's a place of prayer do you have a place of prayer? Do you find yourself in a place of prayer? Wherever you are, you are, wherever you go, it can be your place of prayer. What God wants is you to spend time in the presence of God, in prayer. It's important to pray. Without the foundation of the word, without the foundation of prayer in your life, you know, there's, there's nothing much you can do. You can do, yes, but to a certain extent, you ought to be a prayerful child of God. So that is what we are learning this month of June as we pray. We said we are going to pray like never before. And the Spirit of God says that when we pray, He says, you know what? After this time, you will be consistent in your prayer life. You will, nobody will be forcing you to pray because you will, the Spirit itself will drive you into your place of prayer. Praise the Lord. So now, what is prayer? Prayer is a private time between you and God and uh, it, it, it says of practice of the time is the time rather to communicate with your heavenly father so now I'm going to take um, the other process talking to God it's it's it is the communication of the human soul with the Lord who created the soul it is the way for a believer to communicate his emotions, his desires with God and to fellowship with God. So prayer is actually you communicating with your heavenly father, having time to fellowship with God. Do you have time to fellowship with God? What do you think prayer is? And when you pray, what do you do in your place of prayer? Do you just sit and keep quiet and assume, you know, the, the words will just come out 
or you get into a place of prayer, open your mouth and begin to speak to your Heavenly Father. Because it's communication. Imagine you are with your spouse, you just look at each other, you don't talk, you don't communicate, you don't do anything. What do you think is going to happen? There's a solution that needs to be resolved. You're just looking at each other. Or maybe it's your boss or wherever you are in your, in your company, wherever you are, you know, let's say you are at work in your business, you just look, you don't, you don't communicate. How can, you know, another person know what needs to be done and so on so but god already knows what is in our hearts knows the desires of our hearts knows everything about us yet he still asks us to pray why because the prayer is for our benefit it doesn't benefit god it benefits you the person who is praying so we ought to pray right uh is prayer important royals yes prayer is very important prayer is important you find solutions you find answers you find strategies ideas in your place of prayer right and that is where you also understand and then now i like this poem because i'm just taking some points quickly before we take the scriptures until you understand um and until you understand the value of prayer until you understand the importance of prayer you know and value the, the prayer it says you will not know what it can do for you so uh, let me check it again important until you understand the value of prayer and the importance of prayer and the benefits so until you understand the value of prayer the importance of prayer and the benefits of prayer you will it will not make sense to you you will not enjoy prayer so for you to enjoy prayer you need to understand what does prayer do into your spirit what does prayer do to you what are the benefits of prayer in your life what are the values of prayer so if you can understand that you will not be forced to pray royals you will know that no what i need to pray at all times so prayer is very important in our lives like we're going to take the book of jude 120 right now we're taking the scriptures right jude 120 and then it says but ye beloved Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So prayer actually benefits you by building your spirit, building yourself. So if you don't pray, you cannot grow spiritually, royals. If you don't pray, you will not have fine solutions. If you don't pray, you will not know what the Spirit of God is saying to you. If you don't sp spend time in prayer, Jesus Christ spent time in prayer. Hence he was for signs and wonders. Why? Because he always communicated with his heavenly father. He always asked God, what are we doing? What is the next step? What do we do? He, there was a way he was communicating to his heavenly father. So we need to pray. So Jude 1 10, 20 says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So that means a place of prayer. Uh, it says, uh, Okay, so you, you have to be, you know, place of prayer mostly and pray in the holy ghost that is speaking in tongues right you need to if you don't speak in tongues this is the wrong right time for you to understand what is the what is the significance of speaking in tongues and why do i need to speak in tongues and how do i speak in tongues like i said in the beginning that if you would like to really receive the gift of speaking in tongues just text us you know email us or find a way to communicate with us uh, on any of our social platforms find the contact on us because we can get us on a, via the email you can inbox us we will communicate with you over the phone call you over the phone and pray with you so that you can receive the gift of uh, of speaking in tongues there's no distance in the realm of the spirit like i said wherever you are we can pray with you we can receive the gift of tongues amen so now jude 1 20 says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost so when you pray you build yourself not god god is already built he's the monarch of the universe he's the creator so when you pray you are building yourself you are building yourself so you pray in the name of jesus and you ha you must have faith right james 1 6 so when you are praying you're praying in the name of jesus and you must have faith so we are talking about prayer the importance of prayer right so the spirit of god helps you Let's look at Romans chapter 8, 26. So for those who say, I don't even know how do I pray, listen to this. That is why we say it is important for us 
to be filled with the spirit right excuse me let's look at it romans romans 8 26 so we just we we, we shared the message last um last the last sunday on prayer right so we just talking uh, i mean sharing more on the importance of prayer likewise the spirit helps us in our weaknesses for we do not know what to pray for as we ought but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words right that's the esv let's look at the niv version in the same way the spirit helps us in our weaknesses we do not know what to what we ought to pray for but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans so that is the spirit of god it intercedes for us so if you are praying into maybe you don't even understand you know why you how you ought to pray and so on when you pray in tongues you you get filled with the spirit of god praying in tongues to a point where the spirit itself intercedes for you the spirit itself speaks on your behalf make groanings that cannot be uttered on your behalf so you are just there as a vessel but the spirit is the one praying so imagine imagine what god can do through you in your place of prayer imagine the revelations that you can receive in your place of prayer imagine the insight imagine the the the, the solutions the ideas the strategies that you can receive in your place of prayer so if you don't like praying that means you're not ready to receive solutions if for your business, for your job, for your ministry, for your family, you know, whatever the case that you want to resolve, without prayer, you will not know what to do, right? So we have to be in the place of prayer. You ought to find yourself in a place of prayer every time, royals. You, the Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You yourself, you are already a temple. So wherever you find yourself, make a place of prayer inside of you you can pray in your car you can pray wherever you are you can you can just get into a restroom for some minutes you know maybe you're at work and you need some time off you can just find a place a corner somewhere and pray it doesn't matter how long it can be five minutes it can be like three minutes it can be 10 minutes it can be 15 minutes depending on how you know your schedule is one hour half an uh, i mean uh, uh maybe like half an hour one hour two hours three four five six hours the whole night the whole day is up to you but you have to find time to pray you can't say i don't have time to pray there ought to be time to pray find yourself in a place of prayer and pray okay so james 1 6 let's look at james 1 6 we're taking the scriptures already royals so we're talking about the importance of prayer, right? So Romans 8, 26 is telling us that the Spirit makes groanings for us. James 1, verse 6. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. So when you are praying, when you are asking, when you're praying to your heavenly father, you must have faith. You must believe. You can't just pray. You know, we have so many people that have got prayers that are not answered, you know, because maybe it's not because we don't believe. Maybe we don't believe. Or maybe as you pray, you are already doubting like, God, will you do this? You are praying and asking God for something huge. And then in your mind, you're like, ah, I don't think so. You know, that's doubt. So you are not ready to receive. So when we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we must have faith. And we believe that we have received whatever that we are praying for in our place of prayer. So the Holy Spirit actually, you know, communicates with us mostly in our place of prayer. I want us to look at the book of Mark chapter 11 while i was praying the spirit of god dropped this message in my spirit in the book of mark chapter 11. so we are still talking about prayer so that you can understand you know i like god because every time he's teaching you something 
he always makes sure that you 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 experience it and he, the word of god is practical royals the word is practical so you cannot listen to the word of god you cannot be part of the word of god you cannot meditate on the word and there's no practical part of it the word of god is practical so while i was praying i was in the place of prayer speaking in tongues and praying in the holy ghost because you know sometimes you're like god i don't even want to pray and ask for material things i don't even want to pray and ask for this i just want to pray in the spirit while i was praying in the spirit the holy spirit said you know when you are in the place of prayer like this that's where things begin to happen you know all the levels that you want to get to you can get to there's revelations in the word of god that he can reveal to you in your place of prayer so the spirit of god dropped mark chapter 11 in my spirit we are going to read it right now it's a little bit long but there's something that the holy spirit said in that message in that uh, in that chapter and something that god is revealing to us now all this because of prayer so i said god imagine if i didn't pray imagine i was not in my place of prayer imagine i didn't even spend time in prayer so whatever it is that you want you know sometimes you may say you know what god doesn't even talk to me i don't even know if god really talks god does talk or you may say i don't even know if god can talk to me through the word yes god can talk to you through the word but if you can be in a place of prayer that is when you can hear the spirit of god listen to this let's look at mark chapter 11. let's look at mark chapter 11 because there's something that god said like this month of prayer this is what god is saying to us there's something that ought to be done and this was found in a place of prayer okay i'm gonna read the niv version first we'll try to take other versions as well this was jesus as they approached jerusalem and came to bethphage and bethany at the mount of olives jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them go to the village i heard of you and just as you enter it you will find a cold tide there which no one has ever ridden a cold that was a donkey right a cold tide so that was a cold that was never been used and then he says which no one has ever ridden and then he says untie untie it and bring it here if anyone asks you why are you doing this say the lord needs it and will send it back here shortly so the lord needed it because remember he had just arrived in jerusalem as he was approaching jerusalem so now he wanted he needed to he needed to make use of the cold you know as he gets in to the place they went the lord needs it and i will send it back here shortly they went and found a coat outside in the street tied at a doorway as they untied it some people standing there asked what are you doing untying that coat they answered as jesus had told them as jesus had told them to and the people let them go when they brought the coat to jesus and threw their cloaks over it he sat on it Many people spread their flocks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the field. These, those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna oh, is the highest in heaven. Now we, as we continue, we're going to continue further. But he said, go to this particular place. You will find a donkey that is tied. When you get there, untie it. Bring it to me so that I can make use of it. He says, untie it. Bring it so that I can make use of it. And he ride the donkey. He used the donkey to enter. And then while he was there, people had to actually, you know, put all, you know, if you, if, if you remember, they had to put, you know, by then that was their red carpet. They had to unroll their own red carpet of leaves and all that 
you know, for Jesus to walk, on, I mean, for that donkey to walk on, on, on all those leaves as Jesus was on it. He needed to make use of it so that people can actually, you know, so he can actually see the people and do the work that he had, he had to do. There was an assignment, but that thing had to be done. It had to be done. He had to find the donkey and tie it and make use of it. And while I was praying, and then I said, the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? He said, listen, on your journey, as you are churning in your spiritual walk, as you are churning in your life, in your business, in every area of your life, sometimes you can flow as you journey. But there are times where you find yourself a little bit stuck. And then you are like, okay, what is the way forward? What, what do I do right now? He says, there's that rope that is tied. There's that, it might be that time, at this time it might not be even the cold. But they seem, because remember, they had to tie the cord with the, with something, right? And then he says, if there is something that is tied, untie it so that you can flow, so that you can move. And I was like, as I was praying, I'm like, God, what does this message mean? He says, this is the time to untie. This is the time to untie. You're going to untie the cord and make use of them. So you're going to untie in your finances and make use of all the finances that need to make use of. You're going to untie in your material blessings. You're going to untie in every area of your life where there was a stagnation, where the things were not moving the way they ought to, where you were finding yourself stuck. It says you need to untie. Untie and make use of it. When they ask, you say hey, we, you need it. This is the time where you need those finances to be used. This is the time where you need the promotion. This is the time where you need the blessing. This is the time where you need to grow spiritual. This is the time so you're going to be in your place of prayer and learn how to untie. So God has given us the ability to untie every situation. You know, there's a, there's a message that, there's a song that we always say, break, uh, that, that we, we sing, we break every chain. You know, we break chains. But this time around, it says, hey, it's not about the breaking only. It's the untying. Because when you untie, like, you know, when the rope is tied, when you untie it, there'll be a flow. So you need to untie for you to flow. If you break, they'll still be tied. So you need to untie so you can flow. But you can only know that in your place of prayer, royals. In your place of prayer. So what is it that you want to do? You need to untie. You need to untie. So when something is tied, it means it can't move. It can't move. The court was tied. It couldn't move. It couldn't do anything. It was just there. Nobody could use it, right? But when Jesus came and said, untie, go and untie that cord. You will find the cord that has never been used before. You will go to places where you will find, you know, opportunities that they've never been given to anybody. You will get to a place and find, uh, you know, promotion and so on that nobody has ever even thought of it. But you will untie and begin to make use of the promotions, begin to make use of the opportunities, begin to make use of the, 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 the advantages that God has created for you. Why? Because we have found it. Jesus saw the cord and then says, Go, you will see the, the cord in this particular place that is tied. And tie it and bring it to me so that I can make use of it. So this is the time to be in your place of prayer the most. So that you can pray more and let the Holy Spirit guide you and show you where there are cords that need to be untied. As you untie them, you make use of them for your ministry, for anything that has been a stagnation. It's time to untie. Limitations are broken. You know, you need to make use of the blessings that God has given you. You need to make use of the, the, the platform that God has given you. You need to make use of the finances because he has given you already. But you just need to know where they are and untie then you can make use of them so you can know that in your place of prayer okay then so you have to be in a place of prayer royals, so that you can have the eyes of the spirit to see where to untie 
and then i like this point that we took here it said god wants you to be in a place of prayer Le the levels that you want to get to things you want to do and changes you desire to see in your family in your organization in the lives of your children in your business in your ministry in the visions or even if it's the revelations that you want to receive you can get them in your place of prayer so if you're not a prayerful person you don't like to pray or you don't even think that is there's a reason for you to pray you need to understand that you ought to pray this is the message for today prayer is our message you know sometimes we find ourselves so busy such that we don't even have time to pray yet we want things to happen in our lives we cannot make we cannot use the name of jesus or use god like he's a you know a, 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 a gambling i mean it's a gambling name when you feel like using it you just go and call it call it call it call it and then it makes things happen god is not like that god needs his attention and he wants us to give him that attention in our place of prayer you cannot pray when you feel like you have the time you must always have time to pray royals so we spoke about this last sunday and we are continuing again talking about your place of, i mean the place of prayer emphasizing the importance of prayer the importance of prayer you know as a child of god without prayer there's no growth without prayer there's no there's no solutions you may have general solutions like normal solutions every other person can have but there are those solutions that require you to be of the spirit God didn't create us to be ordinary. God didn't create us to just be like normal people. You know, we are not ordinary. We are superhuman beings for signs and wonders. So we ought to be in our place of prayer. So now the revelations that you want revealed to you. If you want revelations to be revealed to you, spiritual growth. And if you want to know how to win, in life you want to know how to win it ought to be in your place of prayer you can only win first in the realm of the spirit before you can win in the physical so you ought to be in your place of prayer so let's look at the book of first thessalonians the message is very simple i like what apostle paul say you know he says that you will need to preach the gospel in simplicity you know make it simple yet understandable let's look at first thessalonians first thessalonians 5 17 it says we ought to pray without ceasing like pray without ceasing so that means you need to pray constantly you need to pray continuously every day you pray you can't say i'm not i'm not in the mood of praying you ought to be in a place of prayer every day. You ought to be in a place of prayer. So then it says that, um, oh, okay, so when we were giving an example of our Lord Jesus Christ, all his results, his miracles, his signs and wonders, the revelations, every word that he preached, everything that he shared was because of prayer. He was a man of prayer. And he wants us to be men and women of prayer. So when you start praying or take your prayer life seriously, you will begin to win in life. Pray always continually and continue to grow. So the moment you take your prayer life seriously, when you begin to take your life of prayer seriously, Royals, like the way you seriously take your, your job, you know, people are like, you know what, I ought to hustle. I ought to make money for things to happen. I ought to do this. Why are you so serious about your job, yet you can't even be serious with prayer? The same way you are serious about your source of income, the same way you are serious about how to receive money for you to make ends meet, is how you ought to be serious with your prayer life. Now, the good thing about 
being in a place of prayer is that you always find solutions that make your job easy, that make your business easy, that make every other thing that you're struggling for easy. A place of prayer. You ought to be in the place of prayer. So we have to pray continuously. We have to pray continuously. So let's look at, let's continue on this one. I want us to see something. Mark chapter 11. I'm going to take the amplified vision this time. Let's see what Jesus said. So when they were nearing Jerusalem at Bethphage, and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a donkey, a donkey that's like cold tide, which has never been ridden by anyone. So can you believe that there are opportunities that have never been found by anyone for you? And then it says, which has never been written by anyone, untie it and bring it here. It says, untie it and bring it here. So they went away to the village and found a cold tide outside at a gate in the street. And they untied it. Some of the people who were standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the cold? They replied to them, just as Jesus has directed and they for allowed them to go. They brought the coat to Jesus and put their coats on it, and he sat on it. And many of the people spread their coats on the road as an act of tribute and homage before a new king. And others scattered a layer of leafy branches which they had cut from the fields, honoring him as Messiah. Those who went in, those who went in front, and those who were following him were shouting in joy. And praise will sana save our pray blessed praise glorified is he who comes in the name of the Lord blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David Hosanna is the highest so they were praising Jesus when he was in the cold that he sent the disciples to go and untie there's an easy means of transport to your next level that God, when God just shows you, he will tell you, go and untie them and make a move. Go and untie them. So what is it that you've been stuck, I mean, uh, struggling for? What have you been stagnant with? It's time to untie and make use of it. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple enclosure. And after looking outward at everything, he left for Bethany with the 12 disciples because he was already late in the day. On the next day, when they had left Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing as at a distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he would find anything on it. But he found nothing but leaves. For it was not the season for figs. He said to it, no one will ever eat from, uh, fruit from you again. And his disciples were listening to what he said. So Jesus found the fig tree and there was no nothing to eat. He was hungry. And he told the fig tree, listen, you never have fruit again. Then they came to Jerusalem and he entered the temple grounds and began driving out with force. The people who were selling and buying animals for sacrifice in the temple area and overturned the tables of the money changers who made a profit exchanging foreign money for temple co um, coinage and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he would not permit anyone to carry merchandise or household ways through the temple grounds using the temple area invariantly as a shortcut he began to teach and say to them is it not written my house shall be called a house for prayer for all the nations but you have made it a, a robber's den so he was telling them that didn't i say to you that is it not written that this he says my house shall be a house of prayer so even in the house of God is your place of prayer. You can be in the house of God and you find yourself in a place of prayer where you pray. So in the house of God is a place of prayer, right? 
The chief priests and the scribes heard this and began searching for a way to destroy him, for they were afraid of him since the entire crowd was struck with astonishment as his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples would leave the city. In the morning, as they were passing by, the disciples saw that the fig tree had withered away from the roots, and remembering Peter said to him, Rabbi, Master, look, the fig tree which you cast has withered. Jesus replied, Have faith in God constantly. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart in God's unlimited power, but believe that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him in accordance with God's will. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance, so whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will, Believe with confidence. Trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. It says whatever that you're going to ask in prayer, in your place of prayer, anything that you are going to ask the Lord, as long as it is according to his will, as long as it is according to him, says that you receive, says believe with confidence, trust that you have received them. So when you are in your place of prayer, asking God, According to his will, you must believe. And this is whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. Drop the issue, let it go, so that your father who is in heaven will also forgive you for your transgressions and wrongdoings against him and others. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your transgressions. So now you're saying that in that place of prayer, as you are praying, you can't pray and you have grudges. Imagine going into a place of prayer. Going into your place of prayer, you are praying and your heart is heavy because of somebody did this to you. My brother this, my sister this, my friend this, my pastor this, or whoever said this to me, my colleague this. If you are in your place of prayer, you ought to be clean. Your heart ought to be clean. Your mind ought to be clean. Because remember that you are talking to your heavenly father. Imagine you are going to your place of prayer to pray to your heavenly father, whom has forgiven you yet you haven't forgiven the other person because remember the word of god is practical it says we must be the doers of the word not the hearers only so you ought to practicalize the word you are going into your place of prayer praying to your heavenly father yet you are offended offended by somebody else you are angry because of somebody else you have you can't forgive yet you are going to your place of prayer you can't go to your place of prayer prayer with a heavy heart that is what jesus is saying here listen to this let's look at it again for this reason i'm telling you whatever things you ask for in prayer in accordance with god's will believe with confidence so that means you must have confidence in your heavenly father you must believe if you are you know if you are coming out of a place of prayer and you still have doubts of what you prayed for then you didn't, you wasted your time. Your prayer was in vain. Because when you are in your place of prayer, praying, asking God, you ought to be confident of this very thing. That the one that you have prayed to, that where you have asked for, you know you have received. And you must thank him. Whenever you, it says, uh, with, and they will be given to you, it says that you have received them and they will be given to you. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. So in your place of prayer, as you are bound down to pray, if you remember that you have anything against anybody, forgive. You need to let go. Drop the issue. Jesus says, drop the issue. Let it go so that your father who is in heaven will also forgive your transgressions and wrongdoing. So imagine you are in a place of prayer, you are praying, but you are angry. You are swearing like you are even vowing that this person will not. But you are in a place of prayer. So it is very important for us royals to pray with a clean heart, clean mind, and our spirits ought to be clean as well so we want to see results in this month of june we want to see results in our place of prayer 
You want to see results in your prayer life. You want to see results in your spiritual growth. You want to see results in every area of your life, in your finances, in your marriage, in your business, you know, in your family, in your children, and so on. It all starts in the place of prayer. You ought to be prayerful. If you are lazy to pray, I can guarantee you that even blessings will take time to get to you. Why? Because you are, you are not active. God wants, it, uh, wants us to be, you know, to partner with him, to be active. Imagine you are using God. Imagine that you, you, you are not even scared. Just think of yourself that you are not scared to even scam God. <laughs> you are not scared to scam God. Scamming God, manipulating God. Yet he is the one who created you. You are not scared to scam him. And say, oh God, you know, when you feel like you want something, you're like, it's when you are serious with prayer. Because you want something to happen. And then it happens, you, are, you relax again. You will come again next time when you feel like, but it says pray without ceasing. That means continuously. You are receiving blessings or you are not even seeing them. You are seeing them. Things are flowing. They're not flowing. Things are moving. They're not moving. However, I said you must pray without ceasing continuously it's an everyday thing it's your lifestyle it's who you are it is your nature you feed on it you are like that fish that stays in the water when you take the fish out of the water it dies so you are the fish in your place of prayer you are the fish in your in your spiritual life so that means you ought to be in the presence of god 24 7 of your life every second breath of your life you ought to be in the presence of god so you can't say i'm gonna take a break you can't say, you know what, God, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Hey, today I'm not feeling it. You know, imagine God doesn't even say, you know what, I'm sorry. Today I'm not feeling it. I'm not going to give you my breath. You are breathing every single second of your life. You are alive. You're doing well. God is not tired of you. God is not tired of taking good care of you. God is not tired of blessing you. God is not tired of giving you the things that you want. But the time of you being in a place of prayer is like he is forcing you like he's forcing you you only remember him when you want a promotion you only remember him when you want something to happen to you you only remember him when you will find yourself in trouble that's where you remember ah there's a place of prayer god what happened there i thought you are with me no 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 god there's no god has always been with you and he's always with you he said i'll never leave you nor forsake you you are the one that leaves him not him leaving you because as you i'll never leave you nor forsake you so God will never leave you, but you can actually turn your back on him because you have received the little that he has blessed you with. So he doesn't want that. He wants us to be in a place of prayer always. So remember you yourself, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you can't say, oh, so I must look for a place to go to, to pray. Wherever you are, you can pray. Wherever you are, you can pray. So make sure that you create a place of prayer in you create a place of prayer in your heart create a place of prayer in your mind create a place of prayer in your room create a place of prayer in your restroom create a place of prayer in your workplace create wherever you are on the road as you are driving in your car wherever you are whether you are in the plane you're flying wherever you are create a place of prayer you are the temple of the holy ghost so that means your prayer the presence of god dwells in you it's in you. God lives in you. His spirit dwells in you. And then you know what he says that he, the, his spirit, if you don't know what to pray for, maybe even in your weakest moments ever, he will help you to pray. So you ought to be in the place of prayer at all times. So this is the message for today, Royals. This is the message because it's for all of us. It's for us. There's something like we shared last week, said that there's something that God wants to do through us there's something that he wants to reveal through us there are levels that he wants us to take us to but he wants us to be in our place of prayer so you want to see results be in your place of prayer so if you're watching me right now maybe you are not born again don't have a relationship with our lord jesus christ you know 
you can't be the partaker of this anointing. You can't be the partaker of that grace like that. You need to give your life to Christ. The Bible says that in the book of Romans 10, 9, so that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it says you will be saved. So for you to be saved is first by giving your life to Christ. So I'm going to lead you with the prayer of salvation right now, royals. And if you're not born again, I'd like you to say this prayer after me and mean it with all your heart. Then you can join us in the place of prayer and pray with us always. So say, oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life from this day. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and rose again from the dead for my, for my justification. Today, I declare that I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. I have eternal life now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. I am a new creation in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. If you have said this prayer, you are born again. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus right now, royals. And God loves you. And now that you are born again, it means you ought to be in the presence of God at all times. You need to go to church. You need to study the word. And you must be in your place of prayer at always. Glory to God. So, you know, when you look at the world, the way I the, the, the people of this world do their things. You know, those that believe in idols, those that they believe in secret societies who do all kinds of rituals, those who believe in their, you know, who have got strong beliefs to do their, the, whatever that they do. You cannot change those people's minds. You know, when it comes to whatever that they believe in, until God, until the Spirit of God, you know, touches that person and say you know what i am your god whatever that you're doing ought to bow those people they stick to what they believe in you know but as a child of god you look at you you are struggling to pray struggling to do the work of god struggling to to to, to make your confession struggling to do the, but yet there are people of this world that are actually doing things that are even of no effect things that are even useless and yet they are doing them there you are as a child of god fulfilled with the holy ghost full of the word yet you still cannot spend time in a place of prayer you can't study the word you can't do that which god wants you to do and yet you still want to go out and win the world how can you win the world when you can't win in a place of prayer so we ought to make up our minds real as God's children, that we will win in our place of prayer. So that when we get into the nations, when we get into the uh, uh, cities, when we get into the places where God is sending us to, you just go there, walk in, you know, and, and, and enjoy the fruit. Why? Because you have prayed already. One of the reasons why we struggle maybe in soul winning and, oh, you know, uh, uh, ministering the, the word of God is because you don't pray. You will go out and then you find it difficult for you to win a soul. You will find it difficult to, to lead somebody to Christ. Why? Because you, 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 you don't pray. But when you pray, you find yourself in a place of prayer. The Holy Spirit will direct you to the people that are hungry for the word. The Holy Spirit will direct you to the right uh, people that are in need of what you carry. Not only that, even in your business, it will not be hard to find clients. It will not be hard to sign deals when you spend your time in your place of prayer. So let us learn to pray. So we want to grow spiritually. We want to grow physically. We want to grow in every area of our lives. And we want to do extraordinary things. We have to be in our place of prayer always. So this is our month of prayer. We are going to pray like never before. We will pray at any time. And we must pray always. Like he says, pray continuously. Pray without ceasing. So you will be in a place of prayer 
continuously this month of june and not only just june but throughout your whole entire life whereas you will train yourself to pray always glory to god so i hope you are actually you know minister to especially if you, you know yourselves royal if you know you have been weak one way or the other in your prayer life this is the opportunity for you to be revived in your spirit and get back to your place of prayer so that you can begin to see changes in your life so we're going to pray right now and thank god for the word that we have received today the scriptures that he has helped us share and yes we will thank him for reminding us by the spirit of god on the importance of prayer why we ought to be in our place of prayer because when we pray it benefits us not him we grow spiritually we begin to see with the eyes of the spirit we will begin to grow in our discerning uh, 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 spirit you discern you'll be able to see and there are things that there are spiritual gifts that the holy spirit will reveal to you in your place of prayer you begin to see yourself doing things that ordinary men cannot do and apart from that you will have extraordinary results in your life and in everything that you do you will not even failure will not be in your vocabulary weakness will not be in your vocabulary you know thinking of whether you will make it or not it will not be on you fear will be far away from you why because you are bold enough you have received boldness in your place of prayer so let us pray Father, we thank you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the word that we have received. Thank you for reminding us, oh God, that we ought to be in our place of prayer. We thank you, Father, that as we pray, it benefits our spirits in the name of Jesus. And we grow, God, as we pray, we receive answers. As we pray, we receive solutions. As we pray, we receive ideas, strategies in the name name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, oh God, that through prayer, we know what to do. We know how to grow in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that in our place of prayer, we find revelation of your word. In our place of prayer, we receive insights. In our place of prayer, oh God, we receive wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, we thank you, Father, that every place that has been that has been a struggle, oh God, yes, we find the ability to untie the robes and we make use of the blessings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, oh God. Yes, we untie every rope that was causing stagnation in our lives. As we untie, we move with speed in the name of our Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the word that is working in us, in us and producing results. This week is a great week for us in the name of Jesus. We will flow because we are led by your spirit. We will win because we are prayerful in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for answer prayers. We are confident and yes, we believe in your name. That is, we pray you answer us. And yes, we thank you because of our faith that is strengthened, that is strong, that is growing. We receive answers according to your will. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. I hope you were blessed, royals. Please find yourself in a place of prayer. Always. Glory to God. So it's going to be a glorious month. We haven't even seen anything. We haven't even started. Just find yourself in a place of prayer. If you have not started praying, start praying. From today, he said, you know what, God, this few weeks that I left for this month, I'm going to pray like never before. I can tell you, by the time we get to August, you won't even realize that June is gone. Because you will be praying continuously. It says, you will pray without ceasing. After this time, you will not be forced to pray. You will understand the importance of prayer. You will see the benefits of prayer in your life. You will know that, you know what, I am who I am today because I'm always in my place of prayer so you will not buy I, I actually said this last week i said you know what you will find yourself asking are you you know are you gonna come and pray with me or not if not please can you excuse me because i need to pray there will be this agency in your spirit to pray glory to god so let's find ourselves in a in our place of prayer at all times and win
God loves it. He loves it. He loves to see us win, Royals. He loves it when we win always. And then when he's looking at us like, oh, that's my daughter. Wow, look at that. She laid her hands on the sick and they recovered. Oh, look at that. She won in the business. Oh, look at that. You know, that is what God wants us to do. He says we are for signs and wonders. And we are created in his likeness. So if you are created in his likeness, then you ought to know what to do when it comes to your spiritual growth. We want to grow, do great things in our personal lives, in our businesses, in our winning of souls, you know, in our ministries, and so on. So in every area of our lives, win first in your place of prayer before you go out. Start your day with God and end it again with God. Every day, Royals, find yourself in a place of prayer and see what God will do for you. That is all for today. I love it all so dear. The message was very simple, right? Very simple but powerful. This is it. You know, like I said, the Paul, remember Apostle Paul said that the things of God, they are foolish, you know, to the to, to the world. They are foolish to men, but those are the things that work. As simple as this message is, it is all it is. The, it's, it's actually the complete package to take us to another level. It's a complete package for your business, for your job, for your marriage, for your finances, everything you want. Says, go and untie that donkey and bring it to me. I want to make use of it. Can you also boldly say, go and untie those finances, bring them to me. I need to make use of them for the gospel. You know, go and untie that thing for me. I need to make use of it. It's time to untie. Imagine that as you open your eyes and the Spirit of God is like, open there, there's your BMW car. And you're like, woo, go and untie it. Bring it to me. I need to drive it. That's how God is. Like, you know, he just wants us to see with the eyes of the Spirit. So go and untie that thing. Make use of it. It is yours to make use of. For the purpose of the gospel. For the purpose of the goodness of God. For his glory. He wants us to untie and make use of it. So I love you all so dearly, Royals. God bless you. God increase you. As you spend time in a place of prayer, may he reveal himself even more. May he show you great revelations, great insights, more of him. As you go out, he has shined up like the stars in the sky. He said, we are the light of the world. And because we are the light of the world, we will continue to shine. But make sure you are in your place of prayer. I love you all so dearly. God bless you. I'll see you again next Sunday. And we will be here by 3 p.m. If not by 3, we will come actually earlier than 3 p.m. But we will definitely be here. Don't forget to be in your place of prayer at all times. God loves you. And I love you all so dearly. Like I always say every time. Stay blessed, stay connected, stay in the word of God. Don't move an inch away from the presence of God. It is our month of prayer and be in a place of prayer. God bless you. See you again next Sunday.